When I was planning my vacation for the New Year holiday, I decided to go to American Samoa, and it was says that it's U.S. territory. And I planned to come and see just sightseeing. That first day of arrival was kind of exciting because I was coming for vacation, and uh, I was thinking that I'm going to be spending only four days. Mikhail was born in the former Soviet Union and he and his family, because of threats and discrimination that they faced based on their ethnicity, had to flee from one republic to another over the course of several years. Because of that flight, they never satisfied the residency requirements in the breakup of the Soviet Union to become a citizen of any of the resulting countries. He received the permission to travel to American Samoa, sort of not, not really knowing uh, what he was what he was getting into, I'm afraid. I came here for only four days vacation, so that's only clothes I brought here. I did not plan to stay here so long. When the first articles were published about me and uh, about my case, I was kind of interested what audience can say, and some of them were like thinking, oh, what he's complaining for, he's in the tropical island, how bad it can be. It's not about being stuck about tropical island. We're talking about statelessness, when a person doesn't belong to anybody or anywhere. When I came to American Samoa and all this disaster happens to me and I start paying close attention to statelessness. I realized that apparently United States uh, as one of the developed countries in the world doesn't have any provisions or uh, special law protecting or reducing statelessness. Mikhail's case actually raises a larger issue and that is the lack of legislation in the United States to allow stateless people to acquire a citizenship. Statelessness takes all human away from you and it demonizes you a lot and you start thinking about so crazy stuff and I was thinking about suicide um, on many occasions but something, something stopped me. Our own courts have found statelessness to be a punishment more primitive than torture. I mean, this is, this is something that we as a country have deplored for decades, and yet we have stateless people living within our borders. We have the complete power to help them, and we have neglected them for too long. UNHCR was very happy to receive the news that Mikhail was granted parole. It was an important step forward, but it was also in line with a number of steps that DHS has taken to lessen the daily hardships that stateless people in the United States face. When uh, I learned that I was allowed to come back to Los Angeles, I took like a deep breath. Then I got actually really happy, and I had a tears coming out from my uh, eyes. I just don't want to be trapped anymore in limbo. I don't want to report to immigration anymore. I want to be able to work without obtaining working permit. And I want to go see my sister, my nieces. Mikhail fell through a hole in U.S. law, and he was brave enough to speak out about it. In speaking out, he galvanized the support of students, of advocates, of lawyers, of journalists, and even a congressional office, but he's still stateless. 
rights. We are a global leader on advocating about human rights around the world. And I want the United States to show example that we can do something to reduce statelessness. I don't want to spend the rest of my life and die as a stateless person. I want to, I want to be known that I'm a citizen. That's